All right, so we are back on the Centroid. Pearl bit. Everything is fixed. I dialed the bar in. Everything's all good. Everything checks out. So this thing should be dialed and we should be good to bore finally. So for now, we're just gonna probe away. See what kind of numbers we get. See if everything makes sense. Make sure the machine's doing what it's supposed to be doing. And then we'll pretty much be ready to bore. Gotta set up a boring head, measure some, uh, Measure some sleeves, get it kind of all our numbers figured out. We'll be good to go. So it'll be a little bit of messing around, that's for sure. Probably a couple hours before we're even ready to make chips by the time you start measuring everything and getting all set up. But uh, that's kind of part of it. So I can see she's flipping over. On to the next. So we got some messing around to do, but we're making progress. All right, so sorry I didn't film any of it because I was kind of nervous those are actually coated cylinders and so like here in a snowmobile shop you know sometimes we bore the Nicosil out and it's brutal. This stuff was not so bad but I was just very nervous that it was gonna be difficult but it wasn't. Come out like butter, cut really good so now I'll set a camera up and we're off to pull the All right, so we've been cutting for a while. You can see she's in there doing her bores right now. And it's going pretty well. So I've been kind of keeping track, just making sure, you know, the boring head is taking the right amount. So I've been measuring everything, at least with this for now, because you do have to take quite a bit out. I mean, I'm not being crazy aggressive, but I still got 80 thou to go and it takes about 30 minutes to bore them. So it's kind of aggressive, but that's okay. Like I said, we got all night, so. Not gonna try to rush it along or do anything too crazy, but uh, so far the machine's working good. Everything seems to be checking out as it's supposed to. Um, the boring heads stay relatively consistent. I mean, I tell it to take 20, it takes 20, so I'm happy with that. Once we get a little closer, then I will uh, be using the good old bore gauge to check all that stuff, you know, as we get much closer in diameter. But when you're 80,000 short, you really can't use that. So I've just been kind of keeping track, but. Uh, we're getting there, um, probably kind of, I took like 30 thou on this cut, so I'll probably take 40, and then probably 20, and then we'll be right flirting with the finish size. So then I'll do the finish size, and then I'll probably call it quits for the night. Then all I have to do is cut the flanges, so I've been kind of working on that. Um, you can see on the computer screen here, I just kind of drew the bore locations, and then I hit this button, Oop, and then I see there kind of just shows you what the tool path is going to do so I'm basically just going to do a couple roughing passes on it and then one finish pass and then I'll you know obviously I want them to fit pretty well so I'll start small and comp it out until the good old sleeve sleeve just slides right in there perfectly so so far so good everything is working quite well and uh, probably be a little bit yet but that's all right like I said I got all night so I don't care we're just gonna make it make it right All right, we are back. So you've seen there, just a big long time lapse of doing a whole bunch of boring. So after all those, I think the, actually the GoPro battery died, so you might've missed some of it, of course. The damn things, they just never last. But um, I kept boring throughout the night and um, we ended up quitting about 20,000 short. And I was just having a little bit of variance on like what all the bores were actually coming out to as far as measurement wise. So I talked to a few people and this is actually a roughing bore bar. So I did not know that 
it doesn't really say on it or anything like that and I've never really used any of this stuff so that was new to me and I was like all right fair enough so we'll just switch bores so I have another bore head here and uh, this one is a finishing one so I proceeded with that one and we got the bores not quite two size so the interference is a pretty tight tolerance on these so I just don't want to get too crazy and try to just hit them with the bore and then have some be a little looser and some be a little tighter so we're just gonna hone them. So they're about two thou under right now. No big deal, we can hone them, it won't take that long. It is aluminum. So now it is time to do the counter bores. And so I just wanted to do a little test just to make sure that, you know, everything is jiving before you go ahead and make a bunch of chips. So I just went ahead and chamfered the bores. So obviously all that will get cut away from the counter bores, but I just wanted to do it just to prove to me that I had the program right and that all my locations that I entered in on the computer we're all proper and uh, it sure looks like they are. So we're gonna go ahead and cut counter bores now. I'm gonna stay up a little bit and I'm gonna stay in on the diameter just a wee bit and uh, we'll see what we get. But uh, gotta be really careful, make sure nothing bad happens. You know, this is kind of the most critical part right here, the counter bores. So gotta get the depth good and everything's gotta be right. So I'll set up a camera. And All right, we are all done. You see, I decked it. I got the chamfers in there. I got the counter bores in there. And then I even went way down in here with a long one inch tool and just knocked the sharp edge out of there. You can see there's still a little bit, but you don't want to get too crazy with it. Just sharp edges are usually weak points. So take that out, make it nice and smooth. And then we got a little bit of extra room to go down to hone all the way through because the tolerance is just pretty dang tight on these. so. They need a little bit of room to hone. The old Centroid did pretty damn good. He's all dialed in. And then uh, even on my program here, I got all the positions of all the bolt holes and obviously the bores and all the diameters and I got the whole program all done. 
So basically, if I gotta run this again, it should be quite easy. And then I needed all the bolt holes so I could do the uh, torque plate and all that good stuff. So turned out pretty damn good. I'm really happy with the fit on everything. Um, I'll try to show you a sleeve fit here in a second. Let me grab one. This will be kind of hard to do with one hand, but slides in there pretty damn nice. So pretty spot on with everything. It all turned out really, really, really good. So now we're just basically ready to put the sleeves in. I gotta do the final hone, of course, get it right to size for all these sleeves, and then uh, sleeves will go in. So we should be coming with that here real soon. All right, what's up, y'all? So it has been a little while since uh, you've seen any videos of the, or since I took any videos, I guess, of the Coyote block, but the sleeves are actually in it. Um, I should have filmed it, but it kind of, all of a sudden we're like, all right, let's do it. and. You know, the block was hot and it was time to go. So we did heat the block, got up to probably about 200 degrees and uh, put the sleeves outside. It was about zero degrees out, so they slid right in. But there you can see, we got a bunch of sleeves in this thing. The block is kind of dirty right now because we had it in the home. And then I actually brought it over to Jamie's and we line honed it. And the line hone was actually perfect on this thing. So we checked it, the measurements were good, and then we floated the hone through and then it was super good. So you can see there, Got all the sleeves in, everything turned out super nice. And now it's just ready for final bore, basically. So I got some things to figure out and that's why I'm just going to end this video here because I just don't know exactly on this part yet. But um, I have to figure out what size to make the O-ring for the, like, the top fuel hoops. And then I know a place that sells them, but I don't have an insert that's the proper width. So I'll have to get an insert for it. I think this insert here is 51 thou, and I think I need like an 80 or a 79 or something. So if I can get that, then we should be good to go and I'll just cut it to theirs, but I just gotta figure out some depth stuff. I know it kind of does matter with the head gasket and all that stuff, but uh, things to figure out. But everything overall turned out pretty good. Um, looking back, I guess one thing that I wish I would have done differently is I wish I would have just bored it right to size in the machine because when you put them in the hone, it kind of gets tricky, especially because it's pretty basically a blind hole, so it's really hard to get the bottom right. Now, the bottom does have a lot of webbing there, like your coolant passages aren't right at the bottom of the cylinder, so like, it's okay if it's a little bit tight, but you know, if you're going for like a perfect even fit, um, that was very difficult to achieve in a hone. I'm sure, you know, practice, you know, you do it a few more times, kind of get used to the way these things hone, you can definitely do it, but like I said, this is our first go around, so things can be a little tricky. Um, one thing I did do, I'll show you. I made torque plates. So I'll grab this torque plate here and set it up somewhere where you can kind of see it. There you have it. Good old Coyote torque plate. Turned out pretty good. Um, I never really made one, but like I said, there ain't. You know, there's not a whole lot to it, just a big ass square plate with some round holes in it. Um, obviously, with the block in the machine, I could figure out all the bolt holes and the dowel locations and everything, so it turned out like basically perfect. So that was awesome. Everything went really smooth there. Like I said, the sleeves are in. Um, everything turned out pretty good. So, so far, I'm just waiting to figure out that top fuel hoop stuff, and then we'll be ready to. Uh, ready to do the final bore and then get to putting the thing together so I'm pretty stoked about that um, one other little project and I might do a little video on I have some footage of it right now is uh, these are mini Cooper heads off of like the road race stuff and currently I am digitizing the chamber of it it's probably super hard to see but that probe is just going in there and touching the chamber wall and then you got to line the chamber with um, clay like that so it can kind of go up and then you cut it off at your deck height and that's all stuff that you figure out you know as you set the software up and do the probe so I kind of know where to chop everything off and smooth it out and make it all look pretty good so definitely a lot of work on the computer but it isn't too bad so I'm actually leaving for Mexico here shortly so I'm just kind of chipping away at this right now at least get one chamber done because we kind of had a delay um, and I'll explain it to you because it's sort of interesting. So these heads here, a lot of people deck them like 100,000 or more, easily 100,000 or more. So when that 
what that does when you're going to CNC port it is if you're clamped on this surface here, everything is now moved since you've taken so much off the face. Luckily for us, this head is perfectly parallel. So if you bolt it from this side of the face of it, you'll always be working correctly from these distances and then up here don't really matter on your chamber side. And then like I said, when I port the chambers, it'll just cut air for a little while until it actually gets into where the chamber actually is since there's no material there. So I had to do a little rework on the fixture. This was the original one, you know, kind of more like a cylinder head fixture that you'd see, you know, on a regular style deal. But with the way that these are, and these are also Siamese ports, so like, that's a single exhaust port, it's super hard to see. And that is the intake port. And those two intake ports, they meet up together. So everything is all on the same side. So as far as like clearance for the machine rotating around, you just don't need a whole lot. So that's why I ended up working out pretty good to do it on the top. So like I said, it's clamped on the back side there. Got some Delrin washers in here to uh, not scuff up the deck surface and uh, it should work pretty good, but I'll have a lot of time digitizing these because I gotta do some funky work with the clay to make these Siamese ports work, but that's no big deal. It'll be a pretty fun project. I'm doing this with Jason Anderson, Janderson Cylinder Heads. Um, he does some fantastic work. He's been porting a ton of these by hand, and he figured it would just be more cost-effective to move to CNC porting, at least knock out a majority of that material that he can go in and touch them up by hand. So it's a fun project for me. It'll save him a hell of a lot of time. And it seems like there's a pretty large market for these type of things. So hopefully uh, it can help get his name out there. And I know he develops a fantastic port on this, especially with a good cam spec along with it. And these things run pretty hard. So I think there's a very good market in it for it. So I'm excited to see what it turns into and uh, I'm excited to be a part of it. So it'll be super awesome. But uh, like I said, I'll be in Mexico. I have a whole bunch of parts for the car, so once I get back, it'll be time to start working on the chassis, so that will be super awesome. But uh, thanks for watching. I wish I could have got some videos installing the sleeves, but honestly, it's pretty boring. You just kind of slide them in, so um, you got to see most of the cool stuff on the machining side of it, and that's what I like anyway. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and we will see you next time.